Hey brothers and sisters and YouTube family, hope you guys are being blessed. As you can see from the image of this video, help, help, I can't get up, I've fallen. <laughs> That's how I've felt the last couple of days up here. It's been some rough waters, let's just say a storm. And the Lord allowed me to really encounter a trial that was like a sucker punch. And it was done perfectly, and I was doing perfectly okay. Then wham, just completely broken and in pieces. That's really what a sucker punch is. You find yourself completely fine, doing okay, and all of a sudden thoughts bombard you or something hits you, hits your heart or situation or circumstance and completely sends you in a downward in a downward spiral. So I felt like I was drowning and I couldn't find the Lord's hand anywhere until this morning, which is actually until yesterday morning, when he pulled me up and over and out of the water. Whew, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I really want to share my experiences in hopes that encourages someone else or gives hope to those who have fallen. And if you're feeling terrible, there's always hope, guys. There's always hope. So it began about three days ago when I was pulled aside by a member of the community and accused of something that this person felt was from the Lord. And I was a bit confused because the delivery was so painful. Not only that, but so was the accusation that was stated. So, of course, I told myself, don't get worked up. Don't do it. Just go to the Lord and see what he has to say if this is really truth, if this is from him. So this is a season of Lent. So I really was open to examine my heart to see if indeed these things that were said were true. And I was just being sensitive about it. However, when I went to the Lord, my reading seemed so confusing. And as I mentioned, and those who've been watching my channel for a while, for me, the Lord has really taught us through discernment, um, through Still Small Voice channel, and through the rhemas, uh, using a Bible promises and getting rhemas from the Lord's scripture uh, to affirm if it's from him or lying spirit. And so then I found that the Lord wasn't answering me what I came to him for. And guys, I was hurting. And this is where I get compulsive. So I'm just like, no, one of my weaknesses. When I'm not hearing from the Lord, and I need like on a dire strait. I find myself getting compulsive. I get excessive amount of readings or rhemas. So I picked up every holy book, guys, I could think of, six to be exact to get some type of direction and I got nothing. Nothing was hitting on as to what was going on or what I was feeling. And the words that were spoken to me cut even deeper, guys, as the demon just uses to pounce on me condemnation, rejection, feeling judged and misunderstood. And not only that, but the enemy dredged up so many memories from the past, past situations similar to this and replaying them over and over again. So when I came to this community, now to be honest, I didn't expect the same flaming arrows to hit me here that I got in the world. Ooh, I was wrong. Guys, I was down like roadkill. <laughs> I just cried and cried in frustration, in pain, in such discouragement. I was looking for the Lord in all of this because he has been my only recourse, honestly. But he seemed so far off from what I was feeling. I just felt like desolation, dryness, truly in the wilderness. Even the songs, guys, in worship, and that's really how I run to him. When I find myself in desperation or despair situation, he, I go into the tabernacle of my heart. It says, enter his courts with worship and praise. And that's what I do. And that's where I've met him and counted him in the most profound, amazing ways. And he knows how to minister to me. So I'll get songs and he gets songs that would minister to my heart. Help me lift me up. Give me direction. Like if it's warfare, it's the enemy. And so it gets me out of my emotions and focus like, uh-uh, not today, Satan. But guys. It just seems so dry than usual when I go through some things like this. And I know it's a suffering or some injustice. Lord, like I said, plays beautiful songs with lyrics that speak exactly to my heart, which comforts me greatly. But all the songs, guys, were just about his holiness, about prodigals coming back home, drawn closer to his heart. Many songs did prescribe to the shadow of death, which is Psalm 23. So I was like, Lord, I feel like I'm in a shadow. And there's nothing wrong with songs about his holiness and his attributes. But really walking with intimacy with the Lord, he loves to be more intimate because many times that's how we see God, right? Just holy, you know, um, glorified, majestic up there. And it doesn't allow it doesn't allow his persona to come down and meet you where you're at. And so when I was playing all these songs, I was like, Lord, come on, come on, Lord, I'm drowning here. I'm bleeding. <laughs> where are you? And so that's where I felt I was in the shadow of death. I also haven't been feeling well physically, guys. I've just been really tired. Like, body has been, like, sore all over for the past, like, three weeks. It's been like that. And I know it's a suffering, too, for intercession for the nation. And I have been through so much emotionally just coming here. 
and have been healed from so much, but there's still this button of offense and errors of rejection that still has not been healed yet. And I felt so alone, guys. However, I knew that I need to tell my confessor, which is Mother Claire here. She's the one I run to to kind of bear my soul and get direction as to what the word is trying to do when I don't understand. But it's about finding the right time because a lot was going on for the past couple of days. I was still wanting to hear from the word myself. So I knew where I stood. And if I was in error, I was wrongfully accused. But still nothing. In those two days, guys, I went through bitterness, frustration, and even resentment at God, if I can be honest. I know I'm a hot mess. I tell you guys that all the time. But finally, the Lord broke through yesterday morning. And I'd like to share with you what he said in my journal. And so as I was just writing out my heart, finally I got the courage just to write because at this point I was so frustrated honestly with the Lord I was like I, I couldn't even write I'm being honest with you guys so finally I got the courage to just get up and just write and just kind of bear my soul and so I just began to say to the Lord where do I even begin the past few days have been so rough Lord with pain in my body pain in my heart I found myself angry at you and resentful Lord because of what you allowed God please forgive me I felt so alone it seemed I just cannot find you no matter where I looked as you kept telling me to seek you, yet I could not find you. That indeed is the greatest suffering, Lord. Feeling desolate or forsaken by you. I mean, I know you're always there, but to have the intimate union with you, then being a storm and not be able to find my bearings in you, is the worst, Lord. Then, this is the side here, this is not my journal. But yesterday morning, when I got my readings, I got repentance. And guys, I was even like a sword. I was like, Really? I mean, I knew I had to repent from my heart attitude, but I was like, man, well, can I get some comfort somewhere, some comfort, some encouragement, you know? And we met Sunday as a group um, as well, and everybody got to pull rhemas. And one of the rhemas somebody pulled um, from within the group was like, you know, basically encouraging them that the, the Lord is so proud of them, that they suffered well, and the Lord is so proud of them. And guys, if I can be honest, I was so envious of that card. I was like, how come I don't get that card? You're always giving me repentance. I'm always being called lower Lord. So there I go, guys, like a toddler in my self-pity. So back to the journal. So let me continue. Then I said, then you gave me repentance, which stung even more in my self-pity. I want to hear something more comforting, but I knew you're right, Lord. And then in the Lord's Supper reading, in my missal, you turned to the page of reconciliation of penance. And they went through different suggestions and areas to examine your conscience to see where you have fallen short. So I began to write a page-long list of areas I fell short during this trial, Lord. Oh, Lord, what will you do with me? The situation you allowed with this soul, I see now as a test in heroic humility, and I failed. But there's always hope, right, Lord? <laughs> and here I said, Lord, is there anything on your heart or anything you want to add to these thoughts? And Jesus actually spoke to me. And he said, My beloved daughter, I've been right here with you. And I know how this has pained you so much. But you're right to think it was a test, beloved. A test of charity and humility. You have been bombarded with so many lies of condemnation, shame, and hopelessness. Discouragement and rejection because of this. The demons are opportunists. And wait for any moment they can pounce on you to keep you down and cause you to stay down. But I gave you the readings in your Lord's Supper. My sheep hear my voice, and follow me, none can be snatched from my hand. So you are in the palm of my hand, and that is where you'll stay, when the lies of the enemy assail you, even your wondering, I hold you. The demons are furious that you continue to persevere and endure. That is one of the greatest graces I have given you, beloved, and all my brides, to persevere. To not give up, for there's so much to come and so much ahead. And I respond to him. Lord, I noticed that the day the trial began, the door kept opening by itself because of the strong winds in the room. And in the past, thoughts have always come like it's a warning to be careful that there's an open door. Is that for me or is that your thoughts, Lord? And the Lord responds, Beloved, it is for me. I speak to you through everything. You're very keen on the signs I show you and even the consolations, but you don't trust me. Did I give you the rhema about fear of suffering weakens your love for me? You follow me at a distance. Ask for the grace to draw closer. And 555, five, five, right before it began? And I responded, yes, Lord, you did. I wanted to think was a suffering. And actually, I thought that rhema was for someone else. 
But the pain was so deep and the readings were so confused that I began to see that all this truth would help me. And just an aside here, before I continue, I just want to mention to you that what I was speaking of is that here at the front house, a lot of times the wind can be blowing. And a situation happened when some of my brothers were here and it was the middle of the night, guys, and the door opened by itself. And as the door opened by itself, I had to wake one of my brothers up and have him close the door. And after that, a few minutes later, he got attacked with sleep paralysis, a demonic attack. And then as we began to pray in the tongues and the Holy Spirit to ask for what was it? What, what, why did you allow this attack? I heard the word open door. And I was like, oh my gosh, maybe that's why the door is open. And then immediately after that, all of a sudden, we usually have a pit, a fire here in the meadow right by the house and just burst into flames, guys. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So the Lord speaks in everything. Honestly, he speaks in signs and in symbols to many of us, but we don't recognize it. And so for me, a lot of times when the door opens by itself, I'm like, that's weird. Why is it just opening? I'm in prayer. And that particular day, it opened like four times while I was in prayer to a point I, I was like, this is so frustrating. It's annoying. And I didn't click to think that, okay, the Lord's warning me, open doors, open doors, open doors, pray. So he prompted on my heart now that anytime the door cracks open, that means there is an open door or temptation that's coming. And I should pray our Father who are in heaven. So that I did that actually today because it happened again today. So I just want to share that with you guys so you guys have an idea what Jesus is talking about to me. And then here he continues with the message. He says, well, my little one, in all suffering I allow, there's always a hint of truth in their beloved. It is your nothingness and your lowliness that you must see. That is indeed the way to heroic humility, to see me through everything and everyone, just as I allow King David to be cursed by Shimei. He didn't get discouraged, angry at me or resentful, beloved, but he saw my hand in that. More importantly, he saw his loneliness. And nothingness, so he accepted all things good and bad from my hands. He clung to me alone and sought my praise alone. Hence, that is why he was a man after my own heart. This is a season of purifying, my little one. And this generation, my people, have no idea what it means to walk in true humility and to embrace their nothingness. And I'm using you to be an example. As I've mentioned to you, I called you here to be an example of my love in this community. You came here with your own expectations, just like everyone else. Truly, I'm forming you all into a family with deep brotherly love, but self has to be renounced and crushed, and I'm doing that now with each of you, causing you to see the best in one another when circumstances don't seem so, to not take offense or repeat an offense when ill words are spoken, not venting to one another about situations, pains, or past hurts, because all of these are open doors and kills a sweet fellowship of brotherly love and charity. I've called you there to be the lowliest, the least, and to allow yourself to be trampled on, to submit to all for love's sake, for love of me and love of your brother, to truly become a testimony of love, a nature that is patient, that is kind, that makes no record of wrongs, doesn't rejoice in evil but in truth, a soul that endures all things, believes all things, and hopes all things. Love never fails and draws you up and out of yourself. If you cannot forgive or think the best of your brethren whom you say you love, then how much more those who truly hate you, who revile you, who purposely hurt you, how can you then love them? To love will cost you all of yourself. It charges you to be vulnerable and highly acceptable to pain. But remember, it's all for the sake of me. And for your brethren who you love. So I'm calling all in this community to begin to truly love. To not repeat offenses but rather pray for one another. To see the best in each other. To be solicitous for each other's needs and preferences rather than your own. And when you feel you must vent, it must be under the guise of your confessors. First, confessing your sins to them and letting them know what is paying you. That they may give you wise counsel and penance to truly turn you towards loving one another. That is why this refuge is called that my sacred heart, which is filled with love and more love, my little one. A sacred place to share your faults, weaknesses, to not feel as though you have to be perfect, but perfectly repentant. A place to bear with each other patiently and even make excuses for each other's faults. That is what I've called this place to be, an example for every outsider. So when they come, they can say, wow, they truly love one another. So, my little dove, I have come to console your broken heart, to pick up your chin and say that your sins are forgiven. 
So now you go on and forgive others in the same manner I have forgiven you. And love others in the same way my Father has loved you. For you will continue to encounter this trial and test in your walk. And I want you to heroically pass by smiling, giving it all to me, recognizing in your lowliness that no servant is greater than his master. And if ill things were said about your God, your spouse, they be said about you. But all you must do is respond in abounding love, charity, and forgiveness. I said, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, I renounce unbelief. <laughs> I was always typing this, like, Lord, I hope this is you. Guys, I'm still struggling. And, of course, Jesus responds, Go forth and be my little violet, that when trampled on, gives a sweet fragrance to all around her. And that was the end of Jesus' message. So here, the Lord is speaking, guys, of heroic humility. That's basically first seeing yourself as the nothing we really are. Because Jesus is everything in us, then allowing yourself to be accused, insulted, and forgotten, overlooked, slandered, reproached, and scorned by others without defending yourself or even getting upset. Because you realize we deserve much worse. If Jesus faced all these things by those who said they loved him, then how much more his disciples? Humility is simply the truth about something. And when we really know and believe the truth about ourselves, then what do we have to defend? When we are nothing and Jesus is everything. Oh Lord, help us. It's so much easier said than done, indeed. And in the message, Jesus referenced the scripture it's in David, 2 Samuel 16, 5-13. And I want to read that for you guys. As King David approached Bahiram, a man from the same clan as Saul's family came out from there. His name was Shimei, son of Gera, and he cursed as he came out. He pelted David and all the king's officials with stones. Though all the troops and the special guard were on David's right and left. As he cursed, Shimei said, Get out! Get out, murderer, you scoundrel! Your Lord has repaid you for all the blood you shed in the household of Saul, in whose place you have reigned. The Lord has given the kingdom into the hands of your son Absalom. You have come to ruin because you're a murderer. Then Abishai, son of Zerah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over and cut off his head. But the king said, What does this have to do with you, son of Zerah? If he is cursing me because the Lord said to him, Curse David, who can ask? Why do you do this? David then said to Abishai and all his officials, My son, my own flesh and blood is trying to kill me. How much more than this Benjamin might? Leave him alone. Let him curse, for the Lord has told him to. It is maybe that the Lord will look upon my misery and restore to me his covenant blessing instead of this curse today. So David and his men continued along the road while Shimei was going along the hillside opposite him, cursing as he went and throwing stones at him, showering him with dirt. Dang, guys, that's real. <laughs> so imagine if that happened to any of us. Like, how would we respond? Truly, how would we respond? It really shows the heart of David and it shows he truly knew who he was. His official, his right hand man, then wanted to beat this guy up to a pulp. But David had more wisdom and a heart after God that knew that God allowed him and willed everything in his life, good and bad. So he saw the Lord allowing this and maybe he didn't understand, but he knew that it was good. He knew that God was good and he knew his nothingness before God. And I love what he says that maybe God can see my misery and restore my covenant. So sometimes guys, God allowed trials in our life to really bring us to the abyss of our misery and which brings us at his feet, right? And which brings us to know our nothingness. And I think in our misery, that's when the Lord looks down his loving pity on his child, loving pity on his son and daughter, and brings us back up. So how many times do we take offense, then repeat it by venting to others, then becoming resentful, bitter and angry at that person, and unforgiving towards them? Truly, guys, when we respond in that way, it's pride. And not, not only that, all anger, resentment is really at the Lord, not the person or circumstance, because he allows every single thing that happens in your life. So your response truly is geared towards the Lord, not the person. So you have to have peace first with the Lord, then begin to make peace with that person. And that's what the Lord did with me. I was able to, he, he gave me the grace to have peace with him, that I could have peace with that person. And he's calling all his brides to be laid down lovers, a life that is laid down from every preference, every desire, and every attachment, and to be lovers. To love like Christ, to respond like Christ, to reach like Christ, and a heart attitude like Christ. He's calling us all to that. 
holiness is simply the way of Christ like love. That is the quickest way to holiness. And lastly, in desolation, when you can't sense the Lord in your storm or trial, when you feel like you are under the waves in the deep, when the boat where Jesus seems to sleep, please don't flounder in self-pity like I did. The demons will really throw that at you and have you compare yourself to everyone else, which will cause you to be angry, resentful, bitter, and even critical of others. When you can't sense him, that phys when you can't sense him, that's the more reason for you to rise up in faith and to cling to him, to continue to seek him until you find him, and wait patiently because in time, just like when he was on the boat with his disciples, and the storm was raging, and like master, master, teacher, you know, please awake, you know, the, the storm, the fearful, shaking, trembling, full of anxiety, and Jesus was sound asleep, but finally he woke up and spoke, oh ye of little faith. So finally he will wake up and come to your rescue. Or just like when Peter, when he be, Peter set his eyes on faith on the waves, began to walk towards the Lord, but at some point took his eyes off Jesus and began to drown. Jesus drew near and stretched out his hand to pull him up and over the waves. So he really will do the same for you. So really examine your heart and conscience and repent of any negative response you have had to what the Lord has allowed in your life. And I just want to go through some of the questions the Lord provided for me in the Lord's Supper for you to really examine and think deeply about these things. To see if you honestly have been guilty about these things and repent before the Lord and ask for forgiveness, not only for yourself, but to forgive those who hurt you. Have I disobeyed, angered, or been disrespectful towards my parents, teachers, employers, or other superiors? Have I been unjust? and unkind to those over whom I have authority? Have I quarreled with or willfully hurt anyone? Have I been guilty of cruelty, mental or physical, towards anyone? Have I caused another to commit sin? Have I offended in any way by thought, word, or deed against purity? Have I led others into sin? Have I stolen or destroyed property belonging to any other person or company? Have I given a bad example to the members of my family or others? Have I knowingly accepted stolen goods? Have I told lies, repeated harmful gossip, or injured another person's character? Have I been sinfully greedy, angry, proud, envious, jealous, or intemperate in eating or drinking? And for married people, have I failed to show love, respect, and a good example toward my partner? Have I neglected my duty to my children in regard to their religious instructions, to their training in good habits, and schooling? Have I sinned against the duties of married life? So we must confess the number of our sins as best we can remember them. And as the Lord had me go through this, it was a page full of confessions I had to write out, recognizing my heart attitude, the harmful gossip, the injury of another person's character. So I pray that you too will really take time to examine your conscience and see if there's any areas that you may repent of and truly forgive those who've hurt you. I'd like to say this prayer over you guys or pray alongside with me. My Lord and God, I've sinned and I'm guilty before you. Grant me the strength to confess to the one that I've offended and to confess to you in the secret place of my heart. Increase my repentance. Make it more genuine. May it be really a sorrow for having offended you and my neighbor rather than a wounded love of self. Help me to atone for my sins. May the sufferings of my life and my little mortifications be joined with the sufferings of Jesus, your Son, and cooperate in rooting sin from the world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you guys until the next message.